cognitive dissonance is a theory that I learned about last year in psychology with Ms. Trost. Um, and it's really cool in the sense that the more you look for it, the more you see it in people, and it has like a lot of effect on how you make decisions, um, just a lot of aspects of your life. So basically, uh, this theory was coined in 1957 by a social psychologist whose name was Leon Festinger. And what he's suggesting is that there's an inherent human need to be have consistency between actions and beliefs, and when there's an inconsistency, it increases dissonance. And he says that dissonance in humans is inherently uncomfortable. So when you have inconsistent actions and beliefs, it increases dissonance, and you can do one of three things to get it back down. You can change your belief, you can change your action, or you can change the perception that you have of your action, and that will reduce dissonance and then make you more comfortable. So the, um, the idea that he came up with when he first um, had this idea was basically smoking, because most people know that smoking cigarettes is really bad for you, but there's also a solid group of people that still smoke cigarettes. So that creates dissonance, because you know that it's bad for you, but you still do it. So what you have to do is either change your belief, change your action, or change the action perception. So what he's suggesting is that it's more, it's easier to change your beliefs than it is to change your actions, so you'll probably do that, and that's what a lot of people do. Instead of quitting smoking, they do things like say, it's too hard to quit, or I'm going to have to die anyway, and that's what he says is basically the cognitive dissonance theory, is when you have these uh, differentiation of beliefs, you'll try to do anything you can to reduce the dissonance. Um, so here is kind of like an image of what he's suggesting, is there's three aspects, thought, emotion, and behavior, and um, all of them have to be consistent, and when one of them is inconsistent, you'll do any of the three things to try to reduce the dissonance. Okay. Um, so there's also different paradigms, which are like generalizations or general examples of what cognitive dissonance is, and the one that I see the most, or I have seen the most in the past, is the effort justification paradigm, and uh, particularly in like applying to colleges, you see it all the time. And what it's saying is that you put more value in things that took you more effort. So like if you ask someone like, what their top choice school is, if you take out the financial aspect of it, uh, what they'll usually tell you is the hardest school that it would be to get into because it's justified that the hardest school would be their top choice because it took the most effort. So that's the ever justification paradigm. And you see that there's rationalization in it. People try to rationalize their choices. Um, so it's really interesting in several different aspects. You see it in high schools a lot, especially like if you ask someone about how much GPA or SAT scores should be weighted within a college admission process, you'll pretty accurately see how they did on those two things because if they say like, oh, I don't think SAT should be weighted at all, they probably didn't do particularly well. So they're rationalizing, um, rationalizing their effort or how well they did. And that goes hand in hand with adaptive preference formation. And it's basically saying, if you didn't do particularly well on something, then you won't have it, you won't hold it to a lot of value. So basically, uh, cognitive dissonance is kind of all around you and there's different paradigms. The one I just explained to you is the most that I saw most often, um, but it has like a huge effect on your life in a lot of different aspects. And it, as this book suggests, it can like, uh, dissonance can, can try to make you justify things that shouldn't necessarily be justified. So if you take control of it, you can kind of like make more rationalized, better decisions. Um, and it, yeah, it can also make you say hurtful things if you're trying to rationalize your own behavior. So if you take control of cognitive dissonance, you can make overall better decisions.